thank you to everyone for joining us today as we are here at our edition of Daily Connections. Today is April 16th. I heard uh, through the grapevine that today is wear your pajamas to work day, uh, which is great for many of us. Uh, many folks have been wearing their pajamas to work since uh, mid-March, and so today is freeing in that. Uh, some of us have continued to dress up every day, and today gave us a, a chance to at least wear our fuzzy slippers. So um, as happy National Wear Your Pajamas to work day. Today's topic is uh, around what's good. And uh, for those of you who don't know me or you're listening in for the first time or participating in for one of the, the first few meetings of these, uh, my name is Seneca Wah and I am a dyed in the wool optimist. And I believe that at the end of the day, it's all going to be okay. And I believe that there are good things that come out of every situation in which we find ourselves. And uh, where we are right now, this is part of the Your Clear Next Step mission to help us have better work days so that we can have better evenings and better weekends and, and contribute uh, more effectively to building better communities. And sometimes when we do that, we've got to focus on the good. And in our world right now, it is so easy to focus on the negative. It is so easy to see things that are dark. And, and this was true on the 12th of March, just as much as it is true on the 19th of March or the 16th of April, 2020. Right now, uh, we are absolutely in the, in the middle of a pandemic and things are, um, things are disrupted and things are not great. And uh, I don't want in any way to diminish, diminish that. But I want to spend some time really thinking about how to focus on the positive, how to get that forward moving mindset, how to get that positive mindset uh, around, because I think it's so important for all of us. So I hinted at this yesterday, um, and it's, it's not a new topic, right? When we focus on the negative, we fill our lives with the negative. When we focus on the positive, we fill our lives with the positive, right? When we focus on what we see, we, we drive towards that. It's the old analogy of driving a car. If I am driving the car and I'm looking forward, I'm looking towards the end of the road. As I drive, um, my eyes are looking forward and I stay on the road. And if there is some sort of accident in the ditch or something ugly or horrific in the ditch that I want to go and look at, I look at the thing in the ditch and then I wind up steering that way and I wind up driving right into the ditch. And so we got to keep our eyes focused forward. We got to keep our eyes looking uh, on the positive. Um, I think, and I want to be really, really careful here. This is a, uh, a disclaimer. I do not... Uh, I do not in any way want to diminish, I do not want in any way to diminish the economic impact of this current, impact, uh, uh, current pandemic. I am in no way downplaying the personal, the financial, the emotional, the physical, uh, the, the toll that this moment is taking on many of us individually and collectively. That, that's not what I'm trying to do, so please don't imagine that that's what I'm, I'm doing. I also have a disclaimer that as a, a dyed-in-the-wool optimist, um, even I am not advocating for naively viewing every situation through a rose-colored lens, right? I, even I am not saying, um, just look at everything and smile and it'll all be okay. Some things are really, really tough and emotions are hard and moments are hard and I don't want to downplay the truth that's in front of us. But, and here's my big but, so they're my disclaimers. Emotional intelligence teaches us that a dimension of self-management is a positive outlook. So there is, um, as we talk about emotional intelligence, and this is something I teach on all the time, uh, emotional intelligence, right? I start with self-awareness, and then I move to uh, self-management, and then, then I move to other awareness, and then I move to relationship management. And I can't move to relationship management until I understand who the other person is. And I can't move to other awareness until I get out of my own way, which is self-management. And I can't get out of my own way until I understand who I am, which is self-awareness. So one of the second, um, it, when you get into self-management, one of the big dimensions there is positive outlook. There has to be a self-management that, that allows us to have a positive and forward-moving outlook. And I believe that there are, there are those of us who are wired, like, we can't help it. We're wired to see the roses and not the thorns. And we're so darn surprised when they stick us. Um, there are those of us who are naturally wired that way. And there are people who are not as wired that way. But I also believe that it can be taught. 
I believe that a positive outlook is a thing that we can train ourselves. And I remember years ago being in a coaching session with a colleague who would refer to herself as uh, a pessimist uh, pretty regularly. And she said, I don't understand this. Opti Everybody's telling me I need to be more optimistic. Everybody's telling me I need to be more optimistic. I don't understand it. What, um, why should I? I'm just fine as a pessimist. And I think um, it, it, over the years of, of coaching her and spending time with her, we've, we've seen the uh, ability to influence others, the ability to lead, the ability to move forward and progress in one's career and in one's development and in one's sphere of influence. Your sphere grows when you have a positive forward um, outlook, when your outlook is positive and forward thinking rather than sort of retractive and negative. You have a, a better ability to influence. And so I think if you are looking to influence or brighten spirits or leave a legacy or uh, bring others along, then I think that positive outlook is a thing that's required. And it is, it is part of uh, one of the 12 dimensions of emotional intelligence. So I think it's definitely a thing we, we need to talk about. So um, I think part of how we do it is we make a conscious and intentional habit, a conscious and intentional habit, a deliberate effort to focus on positive things. So a couple of, of tips with this, right? How can you do this? And, and not all of these tips apply to everybody. You've got your own schedule and your own pace and the way your brain works, and that's fine. Um, one tip, uh, start your day with a focus on something good. Before you get out of bed, right, before those feet hit the slippers or the, or the floor, whatever it is, um, before you get out of bed, stop and think about something, something good. I had a friend for years who said, uh, when, when you'd say, um, how are you today? He'd say something like, well, I, I'm vertical, uh, and that beats the alternative, right? I can stand up today. I can walk around. I'm not six feet under. Um, and so he would start a day uh, focusing on something good. Listen for the birds outside in the springtime. Listen. Um, try not to pay attention to the snow that'll be out there in the morning. Um, but start with uh, something positive, right? Something good. I'm grateful for the the other people in this house with me. I am grateful for the ability to sit up. Um, something positive. So a second tip is to keep a gratitude journal. Uh, if you're a journaler, not everybody is, but if you're a note taker or a journaler, um, every time something happens that you're grateful for and that's positive in your world, uh, take take a note of it, write it down and watch those pages get filled. If that's one of those things that you're also a, a color, you like to color and, and fill that place with color, wait till you see the beauty that comes out of that when you keep a gratitude journal. Um, a third one, if you're on social media a lot, make a conscious and deliberate effort to share positive social media posts. Something comes through, don't share the crap. Uh, choose the positive instead. Uh, there was a post today that, that caused me to laugh out loud. It was so funny when someone shared it. So I shared it right along again. Um, if it makes you laugh in a positive way, if it's uplifting, if it's joyous, if it's a message of hope, if it's a message of forward moving, share those. And you know, maybe the, the negative ones, don't, don't share them as often or exponentially share more positive than negative. We talked yesterday about how um, when, when a, a series of things happen to us in a day, we, we remember even though far, far, far more positive things happen than negative things, we dwell on the negative. So you have to sort of force yourself and train yourself to really think of those positive things. Um, spend time with positive people. There's a tip, spend time with positive people. And I don't think it requires uh, physically sitting next to them uh, for the positivity to rub off. I think the positivity rubs off over Zoom. I think it rubs off over the phone. I think it rubs off in uh, emails. I think it rubs off in phone calls. I think it rubs off in uh, chats, whatever, in texts. Spend time with positive people. When they were making the um, Men in Black movies years ago, there was an interview with Tommy Lee Jones and um, th they were asking him, well, Tommy Lee Jones, you're, you're really funny in those movies. How did you get to be so funny? And Tommy Lee Jones looks at the, the interviewer and he says, well, I'm not, I'm not naturally funny. I just stand as, as close to Will Smith as I can get and it rubs off. And I think there's something to be said for that, right? If you know positive people, get as close to them as you can. It will rub off. Um, there's a, there was a, something out of, I forget where I read it. It was about that we become an average of the five people we spend the most time with. If you look at the five people you spend the most time with and, and at least a handful of them aren't positive, add a positive person to that mix or be that positive person uh, to lift others up so we can have that positive mix. Um, and then the last tip I would have is uh, tip number five, focus on catching yourself. Catch yourself in the moment. Um, when you are in a positive moment, you're like, oh, I just thought of the bright side. You know, 
pat yourself on the back, celebrate that you just had that, uh, I focused on the bright spot, um, focus on that. And when you notice yourself focusing on the negative, um, or gosh, that was a stupid turn of events, um, and you start to, someone asks you, how was your X, Y, Z, and a bunch of things happened today, and only one of them was negative, and that's the one you lead with, catch yourself, wait, 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 I don't want to lead with that. Let me, hang on, hang on, let me lead with something else. Like catch yourself in that moment and, and really help yourself to focus on the positive. So those are just a handful of tips. Um, they won't necessarily work for all of you uh, all the time, but um, as we try and become more positive and focus on that positive outlook, again, not to diminish pain, not to diminish real feelings uh, of discomfort and things that are unpleasant. I, I don't wanna take away from those, those are real. But with a positive outlook, we can work through them. With a positive outlook, we can problem solve. With a positive outlook, we can bring others through their challenges as well. Um, there was a, when I used to work at Nationwide years ago, they, they would talk about the mood elevator. And the higher you are in your mood elevator, the more wise and insightful your decision making. Uh, if your mood is more positive, uh, you will make more uh, wise and insightful and other focused decisions. You can make decisions that for, are for the greater good. If your mood is low, you'll make these self-preserving kind of instinctual protective decisions. And so um, at, in our training at Nationwide, we learned to, to raise your mood elevator, right? You would certainly raise it in the moment of decision making. But the point about raising your mood elevator shows us that we need to lift our spirits, right? We need to intentionally and deliberately focus on the positive. So as I open this up uh, for conversation here in a little bit, I want you to share, I want you to be thinking right now, we're going to practice thinking about the positive. And COVID-19 has been wildly disruptive. I will not dis discredit that, right? It has been wildly disruptive and in many ways really, really hurtful. But there have been some good things. Something good has happened in your life. Something good has happened in the life of someone you know personally. Something good has happened and you've seen it on Facebook, you've seen it on social media, you've heard about it. And what we're gonna do right now for these next few minutes is we're gonna focus on the good stuff that we've seen. And I've got a running list here and I will happily share my running list as it comes, but I wanna hear from you as well. What are some of the great things that you have seen? Mm -hmm. 